There we go. Hey. So, do you guys want to spend 40, 50, 89 minutes walking me through, giving me the, the guided tour through the party barge? What, okay, we'll, we'll start. We'll start here. What is this seagull's name? Uh, <laughs> Stephen. Stephen the seagull. I was gonna say Francis. Francis no, the no, seagull. No. Francis is off off screen. Okay. Right. Anyway, I just like that's just the front. That's just the back. Like there's a there's no yeah stairs going up. McDowell, are that's they called a... the front and back on a boat? <laughs> No, they aren't, but I'm going to not, out of respect for Trevor. They're called the bow and the badonkadonk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I heard Big Dole biting his lip. <laughs> Trevor called it front and back. I'm sorry, I don't, please continue. I don't, I can, listen, I opted for that instead of getting it wrong. So. <laughs> That's, all right. You still got it wrong, though, by calling it the front and the back. Now. I can respect I think... that. I think once the boat becomes a house, they're both valid. <laughs> also, front and back doesn't have the same problem. Like, if we were to bring this back out onto the water, then it would be an issue. But as long as it's in house formation. Well, actually, it is perfectly symmetrical, isn't it? Front and back's not super helpful. Which yeah. is the front? This is, well, yeah, this right here is the front. Wrong, it's a barge. It can be any direction we decide. <laughs> I would like permission. I, I would request that we expel Nodal from this uh, from this game. Sure. It's too late. Oh, it's too late. All right, okay, so walk uh, me through this barge. All right. So you come this way. You get in here. This is three is the front, like where the receptionist works. It's like the front, the main area. Okay. This is. I Hold on. I... Alexander's office. So this is Destel's office. And this was like one of the, one of these are like nodal, uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, names are important. Speaker and Florian's office, in which they haven't really told me which one yet. I was just like the furniture in them is just like I was just fiddling and playing with the program. Do we make them all fight to the death over who gets the smallest one? <clears throat> I mean, these two are, are the same size. No, this one's smaller because it's completely surrounded by bookshelves. Yeah. That doesn't sound like me. Well, this is the one I envisioned for Nodal's character, like with the with the hammock in the back. Got got a little bit of alcohol over here. He's got some money. Weird heads on the wall, just stare, so you can stare at drunkenly. Mm, weird heads. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, this is my characters. The Gustavuses or Gus. It doesn't matter. Just don't call him Gussy. He doesn't like that. Everybody's gonna call you Gussy. Yeah. Uh, this is just a workshop area. This is a kitchen. This is the uh, rudder for the boat it, okay. up on a second tier. And then there, you, it's kind of hard to see, but they didn't really have good options for doors. That's a door that leads into... That looks like this, a door. Right in here. It leads down to here. That's door-ish. Yeah. This is where Kevin lives. Okay, so <laughs> he lives in the broom closet. I mean, that's a pretty sizable room. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is just storage or whatever. You go down the ladder, and then this is my character's room. He has a boat in there uh, because he got drunk and drug him in there one day. How did he fit it through the door? The boat is Listen, wider than the door. He doesn't know. He doesn't remember. Okay. It's just in there now. <coughs> this is uh, Lucius's room. Yeah. The instructions that were given were Spartan with... Like some bookshelves for stuff and like a, yeah. What's on the rug? Rugs. Uh, that is where he keeps dead bodies. I'm assuming. I don't know. It's just a rug, Rick Road. Okay. This is a, uh, just a meeting room of some kind. Okay. And this is the common room. And this right here is where we hide our the head, hide the dead bodies behind this wall. All right, we're going to need to have a house rule about dead bodies. <laughs> there doesn't even be a lot of dead bodies on this barge. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just temporary storage for dead bodies. Why is, it, why, is there, why is there a coffin here in the common area? <laughs> to help bring the dead bodies down. I don't know. I figured Gus probably got drunk. Of loot. I underestimated how many dead bodies there would be in this campaign. No, you, What? I don't believe that for a second. 
<laughs> Not even one. Yeah, it's just a common area. You can't really see it on this, but there are poles here. Like, and that's what this hammock's hanging off of. There's like poles here, 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 and here. Okay. I tried to pick like contrasting, like the walls contrast enough against the floor, but I don't know if I that that did super well. That's a problem with a lot of these dungeon map tiles that get put out. Is the floors are way too vibrant. poppy. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, but, what, what are these three rooms then? That's the other character's empty bedrooms that they hadn't told me what they wanted in there. I've thought about just throwing beds in there and just like, just a bed in the middle of the room and says, this is your room. You have nothing else in there. Okay. You want me to tell you what's in Florian's bedroom? He he knows what's in his bedroom. I do. He can tell you. I yeah. Itemized list. Walk us through it. Tell us. Uh, there's more ledgers, scrolls, and books are scattered about. He has two beds, a nice First. wolfskin's carpet, a ball of yarn, Three pipes, two closets, one with regular clothes and the other filled with evening robes, and a sexually suggestive painting of two tritons. Male or female triton? Male and female. Okay. And this is a little, this is right here, should be like <laughs> one half thing over. Yes, I tried to don't comment on that. That's, that's good. <laughs> we're just going to let that go. Yeah. Yep, we're just gonna Where let that is one. the slab of destiny? Uh, it will be in the common a, area once we actually get it. Right, it's in the coffin. In the co <laughs> we've been we've been holding off that talk with Leknot. Well, for... <laughs> okay, so real talk. Yeah. Why do you have the sarcophagus on board this party barge? Gus got drunk one night, <laughs> and he drug it down the this, drug it down the ladder, now, and you, it was just you there. You say this, but you realize by saying this, you're giving me permission. To yes. use Gus's drunkenness against the party at every available opportunity. That's fine. Uh, you have my total permission to do that. <laughs> you all heard I, it. It's been recorded. I it's mean, on I, the I, internet I, forever. So here's the thing. Here's I the picture thing. like the end table in your uh, in your living room. Like at this point, the party's just gotten so used to it. There's a ton of stuff on there. Like it's right. basically just you know we we accept so, it and ignore it at this. It's point. It's been there for like five months. They, yeah. Like, so, they, there was questions the first night, but. You know. There are questions. I want to point out. Good. I want to point this right. out. Treble spent the entire last campaign ruining the entire the rest the rest of the party's lives. I don't remember that. And he's gonna do it again. I don't, I don't remember, remember that. that at all. I remember being the guy I go to when I need magic. I only remember one person yelling at me, and it wasn't Treble. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Nodal's description of ru having his life ruined is just being yelled at. Note that like Birdie it. never whipped any party members. Birdie <laughs> never whipped a party member. Actually, that might not be true. I The only thing I did uh, to hurt any party members intentionally was that one time I got mind control, I shot Razu. Yeah, that you were mind control. That's, that's a lie. That, that, is, that is not even completely, absolutely mind control someone, at all. As someone who played Adrex... How many times did you kick, stab, and punch him? I bit oh, you a lot. How many I times did you drop a hunger of Adar on Yeah, I was about friends. to say, I guess sometimes <laughs> you don't like magic. I don't remember those at all. Listen, that was just good math. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't count. It's true. Excuse me. So the, have we decided whether or not Trouble is going to ruin lives in this campaign? Is that issue settled? Yeah, whatever. Okay. I think it's going to happen regardless of whether or not I, I give consent. We're all going to so... ruin each other's lives at some point or another. It's... So we'll give you the, the finished one that when everybody gives me, like, kind of tells me what they want. I did the bare minimum amount of work in putting a calendar together for this campaign. Because <laughs> last time I made a calendar for a campaign, I put hours and hours and hours of work into it, and it very rarely mattered. So this time... Uh... I think 10 months, each with 24 days. And this world kind of doesn't have seasons, so to speak. It's kind of just temperate all year round in this region of the world. Perhaps at one point of the year it gets slightly colder. It's like Florida. Basically, you guys are in Florida, more or less. Hell. So, like, the other nations talk about Dunfoss Man? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, clearly that's just Thomas is done, boss man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently. Florida, Thomas... You know what? If I Google right now, Florida man wakes up with coffin in house. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> please. Please say yes. Florida man takes 25 years to build Egyptian coffin is as close as it gets. That's oh, darn. Pretty, That's pretty close. close. Pretty Florida man drank the sarcophagus. Juice. Florida man <laughs> arrested <laughs> after allegedly stealing coffin. Allegedly. <laughs> Trump full of coffins. Oh, God. It's worse. <laughs> Whoa. So. <laughs> okay. The campaign, for as much as it impacts you people at all. Is starting on the 12th of Julenyuld, which is the fifth month of the year. There are 24 days in a month, and if you ever need to know the date, you can just ask me and I'll know. Okay. And that's where it's going to come out. I have another map to show you. Two more maps to show you guys. <gasps> One is, like, partially relevant this week, and one will be more relevant in the coming weeks. Which is this one here. Is this Control partially v relevant map? No longer works. Control V is over. It's on I do my break. best to be partially relevant. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, I think we, you should put this on Discord. This is the week. city map with all the districts and neighborhoods oh, sectioned look off. Look at this gerrymandered ass district over here. <laughs> these aren't political districts in the sense that you're thinking of these are just vague neighborhood uh, delineations basically so I can chop the map up and make more zoomed in versions of each neighborhood as we go I've only done that for <coughs> your neighborhood so far uh, do we want to walk through this or do we not care yet uh, There, I don't have a lot I mean... of answers about this map just yet but I do have some uh, I mean, is our, our first adventure going to be in this city? In the shallows, specifically, yes. Oh, if we're, if we're staying Let's in the shallows. Let's stick to that for now, just because I have a hard enough time yeah. remembering things as it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bad with names. Where do the rich people live? Uh, High Bluffs, Silver Bluffs, and South Harbor. Okay. South That's Temple just, District? That's just good information in case we ever have to, you know... Oh, I, I keep forgetting I'm not playing rogue. <laughs> yes, you are. No. We're lovable rogues, all. Uh, oh, trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. It's going to be difficult to get out of that, like, out of that you, previous character. You said that, and I was like, I was getting the Razu butt clench again, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, this is not the completed map, because it has too many numbers and not enough words. Ain't that always the way? I know. I can fix it, though. Watch how fast I fix this. I'm fixing it right Propi now. Propiet okay. pro propietus? What? Is that You've misspelled is... the word proprietress. Yeah, that's fine, but it's fixed on the actual finished version. This, <laughs> this was the quickie one that I threw up on the internet just to make sure that the text was legible. More or less. It's very legible. Legible? Gotcha. Legible? <laughs> Yeah, the words I'm, are hard. I'm not the only one who misspells shit. Listen, doll, you have to be, give me a little leeway because I do not expect my fighter to live to the 50% mark of this campaign just because we have asshole wizard, asshole wizard, asshole warlock. I'm going to be up up front, front by myself. Beg your pardon. Is not an asshole wizard. What are you talking about? Well, it's just you is not an asshole me. warlock. I don't know what you're going to be doing. Like Neither do I. You so can... the default is asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Healing cigarettes. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> also, in my defense, proprietress is a very, very hard word. Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. <laughs> that's a that's at least like a tenth grade this, this reading is much level. Much better. Oh yeah, no, that's oh, a it's lot an better. asshole. A flump story. <laughs> So we probably should run down this list because this is stuff, the neighborhood stuff is, this is things you're going to be dealing with every day. Everybody knows each other, etc. So number one on the map is some weird party barge that's been just thrown up against the sides of the cliffs. And then some ridiculous detective agency is working out of it. Woo! Uh, <laughs> number two is the gloaming elk, who is your herbalist friend. 
Uh, number three over here is a restaurant and inn, the largest inn in the shallows. Number four is called the Stomp Box. This is the public stage that more or less daily has been used by Percival Penelis, who takes the stage and gives speeches against the lords and nobility of Dunfoss, how everything needs to be overthrown, something, something communist nonsense. Does Stomp get performed there on the regular? Is that a reference to the 90s group Stomp that makes music with trash cans? Yeah. Okay, I got there. Number five <laughs> is the Mortar and Pestle. That's an alchemist. It's one of the places in town that sells dragon powder. Uh, very pointedly, they do not... Uh, the city disallows dragon powder purveyors within the city walls. Probably for the best. Yeah. Right next door, uh, because... The alchemist, Hyencott, has a, a forge and foundry. So right next door are a pair of blacksmiths named Peer and Neil. This block here, number seven, this is a large tenement block. Uh, it's called Six Branches. And it's essentially a charity block. Uh, this is where Shemworth Surefooted has his manor. His manor is attached to it, number eight. His manor is actually an extension of the tenement block. His own personal room. He takes three personal rooms on the bottom floor, and that's it for his manor. This is one of the front runners for King. And his he essentially has a charitable foundation set up in town for the poor and downtrodden. So the actual residents of this tenement block are always changing. Think of it maybe like a halfway house. Uh it's filled maybe 50-50 up with people who are uh, sick and homeless and need to be cared for, or people who are just grifting. Number nine is 56 cards. We decided this was both a gambling house and a <laughs> temple to Noribo. The head priest and proprietor is Mulliner Oswald. Number ten is Lord Wustname's estate. He has some private docs. Nobody knows what his real name is. And then I gave you guys a haunted lighthouse out of which a man named Nelwyn Badgersby runs a curio and antique shop. That's a good name. My notes actually don't say, but I imagine Nelwyn Badgersby is a halfling. That is almost certainly a halfling name. Make him an edgy dro. <laughs> and then give him a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should do, is just Google up everybody's like edgy drow character that they've had like art commissioned of and just Photoshop a lollipop into all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Go on Twitter, like, hey, I fixed your character. <laughs> is this specifically only the edgiest of drows, or is that redundant? I Well, I've never known a drow to not be edgy. Every drow like, character I've ever seen played in D&D is um, that character. Well, know, well, Captain Eyes wasn't very, wasn't very edgy. Captain Eyes was, was an edgy. NPC. He, he wasn't somebody that got rolled up to be played at my table. If you're a pirate, you're immediately edgy. That's just the way things are. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. What I'm hearing is, is my next character needs to be a drow. <laughs> Maybe next campaign everybody will play a drow. That's... Ferocity but a drow. I do always start <laughs> planning the next campaign at the beginning of the current one. That's kind of just how I roll. Just all Underdark, all next campaign. That would be awful, and I don't want to do that. Full Underdark mm. campaign? There's actually an adventure path that's set almost out of the abyss yeah, yeah we, we haven't played through it yet i don't know much about it but it's supposed to take place almost entirely in the underdark this world does have an underdark you guys have been to it briefly as i recall lots of illithids and flumps and all kinds of things yep it's great yep. it's a wonderful Is it? place isn't that where uh alexander's from yeah isn't he? i mean technically we're a border kingdom but so it is the morning of 12th Julenyuld. 
about halfway through the fourth month of the year, fourth of ten. If there are like holidays or feast days or whatever, I'll bring them up as they become relevant. Yeah, I was about to ask, are there any holidays of such coming up? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will see if just on memory I can recall everybody's character names as I take down morning actions. Let's see what a typical day in the life is like for Flump <laughs> Inc. And we'll start with Gustavus. Morning action. Uh, morning action. Uh, well, Gus would start every day with a hearty breakfast. Okay, but how is he actually spending his morning after he's? Uh, he would go down and look for uh, like wanted posters, bell jumpers, that kind of thing. I because I, I kind of figured he would probably supplement the in between case income with things like <laughs> looking for like bell jumpers and like just like man catching around town. He's going Seeing to man catching. Any... Yeah. And Florian. Florian is going to go visit Nelwyn Badgersby. See if he's got any fun new curios. Is Florian a collector of curios? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> Perhaps you're interested in this art hey, he has in this Lucius. <laughs> uh, Lucius will probably uh, head down to 56 cards. And Alexander. Uh, Alexander is going to be mostly running errands. He's going to be restocking on all the supplies for the alchemy lab. Uh, he's going to be visiting Mortal and Pestle. He's going to be visiting the Gloaming Elk. And he's probably also going to be visiting the... Uh, is there like a grocer around here? Uh, not marked on the list here. But yeah. yeah, you could assume that that... Like, yeah, he's going, to be, he's going to be doing the financial thing. He's going to be taking... Uh, all the books on money and whatnot, and going and just resupplying the barge this morning. Okay. And Seeker. What day did you say it was? Day of the week? Uh, ends day. Well, ends day is always the day for restoring contacts. So, Seeker will be spending the day going around to all his various contacts in the city and taking the pulse of the town. Okay, each week has six days. They are God's Day, Rain's Day, Feast Day, Arts Day, Salt's Day, and Ends Day. I put minimal work into this calendar. I didn't put no work into this calendar. <laughs> Can you possibly please paste like the days of the week in the flump jet, nope. please? Uh... I can't do it. Maybe I will make a player-friendly version of this calendar in the near future for you. Uh, okay, Wait. Seeker. Roll an insight check. Charisma insight. Okay. Are you staying here in the shallows, or are you going abroad into the town? Uh, starting in the shallows, and then going abroad. Let it be known that Nodal's very first action of the campaign was literally to walk off the map. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a 15. Talk has been increasing in the past couple of weeks about whether or not uh, the current king, Maximilian Silverwolf, who has never been one to make many public appearances, but talk in the current weeks has been that the king is on his last legs. And this morning... You're starting to hear whispers and rumors that some people believe the king has already died and that the palace is attempting to cover up his death in order to postpone the appointment of the next king. So as far as, as, far as the pulse of the town, this is a buzz on everybody's lips. And what's new this morning is that the rumor has changed from, oh, is the king sick and dying to the king has already died. Mm -hmm. officially the palace's uh, story is that the king is still alive and the, there's no need to yet convene the courts so you're not sure if some information got leaked or somebody is spreading rumors or if something else is afoot but that's what you get taking the pulse of the town 
uh, Gustavus. I'm here. Yes. Make a strength check. Uh, oh, wait. You, ah. That's going to get some taking, getting used to. What, rolling a d20? No, uh, they're not in the same order you had them put before. I don't think I like that. Uh, that is a 13. Who could have done this? Wait, what's not in the same order? <laughs> the When Nodal redid your bags, he put them in, like, he switched the d12 and the d20s. I know, and I called him out on that when he did it. And he said, no, it's fine. So I'm like, assuming what? it's fine. I'm on your side. Did Hubert. I swap the D8s and the D10s? Here? I don't have a side. I'm neutral. No, they're... Uh, they're uh, anyway. If those are uh, in the same order, then this is, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> because now it's consistent. 13. Uh, 13. <laughs> if they had been swapped, then I would have been yelling. Like, if it's just a straight, that. straight strength check, it's a 13. <clears throat> Posting bills and general man-catching activities, while not technically illegal, are the purview of the Moss Caps, who are the city guard. Like, they're the ones who, if you, if you see somebody, or if you know of criminal activity going down, you're supposed to flag down the Moss Caps. So when you go by uh, your favorite bill-posting location here in the shallows to see... If anything has been put up today, what you see instead are a group of three moss caps taking all of the posts down, removing the bills from the wall that they've been nailed to. And your, what is Augustus' general disposition towards the moss caps? I mean, respectful. He's not like he's not going to be antagonistic to them. Okay, he's worked with you know, guards and stuff before. He's, you know, been all over mercenary, just doing odd jobs and things. So here's the complication. Is that about half of the Moss Caps are corrupt, bribable, paid to look the other way, and about half of them aren't. Thanks to the influence of the head jailer in the city, who is an appointee and relative of the king. A stout, lawful, dwarven man. And just by looking at any given group of moss caps, you can't tell which is which. Unless you already know them personally. And these three, you don't. And that, in and of itself, is a little startling. Because these are faces that you haven't seen in the shallows before. <coughs> Taking down the bills that you are about to go peruse. Well, I mean... I would, uh... <laughs> Go introduce myself. How? Just how so? uh, just walk up to and be like, "Hello, gentlemen. How are you?" This area before, were you just posted here? I mean, because Gus is the kind of guy like he would go and at least try to be casual acquaintances with all the moss caps in the area, so that like they can go, "Oh, that's Gus. He's good people." <laughs> is Gus good people? I hear he steals coffins. Only when he's had, like, way too much to drink. And nobody knows about that. that I know <laughs> yeah, about. You know what? Somebody knows about that because somebody woke up one morning and was like, Hey, my coffin is gone. <laughs> oh, God. There's a vampire in this city with a missing coffin. <laughs> uh, so you straight up introduce yourself to the new moss caps. Uh, is Gus wearing a weapon? Uh, he would have his, uh, hammer, like his war hammer, just, he would be armed, but it, it's not, it's just at his side. He's How? got a shield on his back. How is it at his side? It's just hanging in a loop. Okay. Like a, like a, it's just in the loop on the side. <clears throat> As you approach loop these about. three moss caps that you haven't seen in the area before, you see their eyes flick from you down to the armor or the, the weapon that you're wearing back up and they very coolly wish you a good morning mm -hmm. and they wait for further response from you 
oh, uh, how are you? And like I said, I'll introduce myself, um, tell them my name, and uh, again, ask them if they are new to this area because I haven't seen them before. Just being as friendly and as bright as possible. Okay. And they're cordial in response, but they don't give you a definitive answer to the question. Like the idea of are are we new here? Clearly, they're not new here. They're moss caps. They're members of new to this been part of the, the city. city guard. Like, you know, like are they new to this posting in the city? Is what I'm going for. They assure you that they have uh, requisite knowledge of the shallows to fulfill the tasks that they need to do. They're kind of waiting for the part of the conversation when you tell them what you, what they can help you with. Uh well, like. Gus will like take the hint, bow to them, and just kind of wave at them and walk away. Kind of disappointed he didn't get to make any money today because apparently somebody saddled us with a thirty thousand gold debt. What's your passive perception? Eleven. Okay. It's like three quarters of a butt. Lucius. Yes. The 56 cards is absolutely not open this time of morning. But as a frequent... uh, As a frequent patron of the establishment, you know that the head priest, Oswald, will open his door to you. Today, however, there are two moth caps standing outside the door. Are you wearing weapons? Or Uh, spell focus? Anything of the nature? Uh, his spell focus is tucked into a pouch. Okay. Uh, and they kind of, as you come into view, you can see they're alert. They're giving everybody... Uh, they're, they're watching out up and down the street. And when they see that you're approaching the tavern, you have their undivided attention by the time you reach the door. And they wish you good morning. Yeah, he'll he'll nod. Think, it'll, think it a little strange that they're... That they're stationed outside the the door but we'll move to go to knock to knock on the door to to see uh mr oswald and as you move one of the moss caps uh informs you that they've been informed by the head priest himself that the temple does not open until evening what's your passive insight eight Eight. Okay, then that's what he says. Look a little, look a little confused at this, but then uh, nod and say, "Very well. I'll come back and I'll come back during normal hours." Then it's I weird. Do. I always, uh, I've always, uh, always had a good morning chat with uh, with Father Oswald. And one of the moss caps assure you that the. The priest, and they say the word priests. Your insight's eight. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> they say that the priest is almost, or is assuredly not in good spirits this morning. Did something happen? No, not to their knowledge. Okay. Let's just head back toward back to the uh, back to the uh, back to Plum Think. Okay. Uh, Alexander. Mm-hmm. Probably instead of a grocer's shop in the shallows, probably what happens is goods are delivered <laughs> at a frequent basis to the Lewin Arms. Uh huh. And you're able to purchase what you need from the cart that comes around daily. Okay. What kind of provisions do you purchase? Like, what kind of provisions do you store on the party barge, other than alcohol, which I assume is in plentiful supply? Yeah, well, I'm, I gotta restock the alcohol. Um, I need food for about three days. I don't really want to make these supply runs more often than about once every three days. You know, a lot of the time I'll have the, uh, you know, I'll have Kevin do it, but I really just, I need to refill my smoke pouch, so I want to head to the mortar and pestle myself. Okay. Uh, food for about three days. You know, enough alcohol to throw a decent party. Uh, we would obviously want, like, writing ut- writing equipment, you know, scribing stuff, paper, 
ink, that sort of thing, since we do, in our line of profession, do a lot of note-taking. Uh, maybe check to see if the uh, Gloaming Elk has any healing potions. And, yeah, other than that, just rest and obviously, oh, the other thing is I have to kind of restock my own Tinker's kit for all the alchemist shit I do. Pretty okay. frequently. I run uh, through this stuff pretty fast. We determined how often she's able to make healing potions for you. I feel like that's the thing we covered. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, this would be, if, if this were the time when she was, you know, had the potions, I'd be collecting them now. Okay. I, I don't trust Kevin to do that. You, we also started with a number of healing potions, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Start with eight. Uh, because you guys invested a considerable sum into saving her business from arson, was the story. Yep. This morning, uh, Arnold Evensbow, one of the mm -hmm. proprietors of the Lewell Arms, it's owned by a halfling couple, Arnold and Irwin. And Arnold's out there arguing with the grocer, as always. Uh, the grocer has a cart stacked high with provisions, arguing about the quality of the day's catch. Uh, Arnold's eternal complaint is that people inside the walls and the other, other ends in the city always get the freshest catch, even though Arnold pays the same amount that they do. He always feels like he's getting the dregs. The grocer is there in this argument, and alongside is a small black-robed man that you recognize as a man of the Signers Guild, who accompanies mm -hmm. this grocer on his morning route every day, just to ensure that no magical coercion is used on either party. Which means his job most of the time is just to stand there and do nothing and look very, very bored. That's been your experience with the man so far. Mm -hmm. And this is the scene as you approach. And Arnold bids you good morning. Morning, Arnold. Can I take the usual? And the grocer starts packing up your order. Arnold asks you, uh, as you've been running around, uh, running your errands this morning, if you've noticed any of the usual men, and he rattles off some of the names of the usual moss caps that you'd see on patrol about this time of morning. Friendly faces in the neighborhood. And he seems a little disturbed. <clears throat> Have I seen any of them? You haven't. You've seen some moss caps, but not the ones that you recognize. Shake my head now. And Arnold grunts in response and goes back to arguing about fish. The grocer hands you your parcel. Okay. I'll throw up my bag, uh, head my way over to the tree. Okay. And yeah, whatever healing potions she's giving you for today, we'll say have yeah, already yeah. been accounted for. Yep. Uh, I forget what is how many she actually makes for you. Do you have that written down? It's like one every two weeks, I think. One every that two sounds weeks. right. I did not write it down aside from the initial ones. So the 12th and 24th of every month is, is potion day. Let me make a note of that on the calendar. 12th and 24th <clears throat> equals potion day. Potion day is everybody's favorite day. <laughs> Her potions taste like berries. Uh, I always figured healing potions tasted like Listerine. Yeah, but not when made by a dryad. Yeah, you should be getting them from a dryad then. <laughs> <laughs> like they taste, it's it's kind of like she she gives them out with that warning that's put on the, like the, the Flintstones uh, vitamins, where it's like don't take too many. I know they taste like candy, <laughs> but don't <laughs> follow the instructions. <laughs> yeah, so the twelfth is potion day, and she you had seven, and now you have eight in your small potion collection. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested to see if the party's exploits outpaces their potion supply. <laughs> and oh, yeah, as you continue definitely. as you continue around your uh, your morning routine, you become more aware that yeah, there are not more moss caps in the area, but the ones you see are men you don't recognize, uh -huh. and they seem more alert than usual. They seem like they're watching looking around more closely than usual. What's your passive insight? Passive insight is a 10. A 10. Not playing red anymore. 
<laughs> Florian. Yes, sir. Nelwyn Badgersby has an enormous sign nailed to the front door of his haunted lighthouse. It is, at one point, this was used as a lighthouse, ages and ages and ages ago. A much larger one now stands in South Harbor for use of the entire town. Uh, the lighthouse itself is no longer functional. And for some reason, the lighthouse is called Gondros Point, And nobody knows why. No one has a huge sign on his door that takes up almost the entire door, as high as a halfling can reach in any event, listing the complicated hours and schedule that the shop keeps. Like, on average, the shop is maybe open two to three hours a day, except for lunch on Wednesdays when the local bakery has this specific... It gets into, like, incredible detail. And it boils down to, basically, if coffee is in supply... The shop is pro- maybe open. It happens to be open right now, though. Okay. <laughs> Nelwyn is a man of no small eccentricities. And entering the bottom floor of this lighthouse, it's been refitted into uh, a floor space. You know from experience that the bottom two floors of the lighthouse our shop space. There's a spiral staircase that goes up around the interior of the tower. Uh, it's a three-level tower. The third level is no one's quarters. And then there's a level beyond that, which is where you would use whatever magical nonsense people used in lighthouses 500 years ago. That's always <laughs> been off limits to you. Okay. And no one is dozing in one of his chairs in this extremely uncategorized and somewhat dysfunctional store of broken toys and knickknacks and items of clothing and pieces of polished furniture and everything else you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Nelwyn Badgersby. Good morning, my friend. And he snorts himself awake and casts his eyes in your direction. He smiles slightly and he asks if he's open. Well, the door was open, so I'm guessing you're open. He says it would seem so. Excellent, excellent. Have you got any fun new curios? Are you a frequent window shopper in this establishment? Absolutely. (laughs) How often do you actually buy things from Nelwyn? (laughs) Um... Where do you think he got the artwork? Yeah, um, <laughs> probably one out of ten visits. One out of ten. Yeah, that's maybe two out of ten on a good on a good month. Well, how many times do you visit? Oh, at least like twice a week. Just frequent enough to be annoying, but not. <laughs> Dot buy enough to be like, get the hell out of my shop. But this is where you bought the Triton artwork. Oh, absolutely. Make a make an intelligence check against his intelligence. It's a contest of wit. <laughs> Fourteen. Fourteen. No one's shop is a curio shop. He sells antiques and knickknacks, but he frequently doesn't have a good sense of the actual value of what he has. You also don't know where he gets any of this stuff. So when you saw this beautiful piece of artwork, this is not the typical thing that he has in stock. And you knew that he does not have a good eye for artwork. It's not his expertise. So you Mm. got this beautiful trade and artwork for a song. And you're sure it's worth way more than you paid for it. <laughs> okay. No one says he has something that just came in that he set aside thinking you might like a look at it. And he Perfect. runs upstairs to the second floor of the shop, uh, which is a little more organized in a series of glass cases around the wall. that The stairs go up behind these glass cases. A lot of jewelry and things, wearable artwork. And he gets this little 
worn looking box and opens it up and inside is the most peculiar metallic device the center of it looks like an octopus's head with tentacles wrapping off in both directions and it's made of some kind of uh glinting metal you're not sure if it's silver or chrome or what but he shows you the tube is open all the way through and he bids you to stick an index finger into either side. Coward. Now if I... <laughs> now if I stick my index fingers in each side, will I be able to remove my index fingers when I'm done? And he starts laughing with glee. And he says, there's a trick to it. Shall I show you the trick? Absolutely. And he bids you again to put your fingers in either side. And this time he does. <laughs> and it's not painful, but you feel your fingers get stuck at the first knuckle. To where you could probably wrench them free if you really tried, but that would be painful. And looking at it, it looks like this octopus has wrapped a tentacle around each finger. But he shows you a hidden latch underneath where the beak of the octopus would be. And you could just barely reach it with your pinky finger. And when you depress it, it releases both of your index fingers. Well, that's fun. What a fun child's toy. He placed the price for this device at 15 gold pieces. 15 gold, huh? Hmm. Well, I, I believe... I, I, hmm. I only have five gold on me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. He says perhaps he can take it up to the forge and have it broken into thirds. Mm -hmm. He says this jokingly. He's not actually going to do that. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. Today is... Uh grocery shopping day as you well know so unfortunately the funds seem to be preoccupied which is why I've only got five gold on me well he tells you now that he's shown it to you he has to put it out on display and it'll be here until it sells and with that he puts it back in the little worn box and closes the box and sets it on top of one of the glass cases mm, I see well maybe there will be some extra funds this week and maybe we'll come along and purchase it but if you're willing to get rid of it now, mm, he jingles his five gold coin pouch. And he pats the worn box and says, it's always a pleasure to do business with Mr. Maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, well. And um, Florian resumes window shopping. Okay. How long do you spend in the shop? Three hours? Nine hours? Uh, probably a good hour. Okay. When you leave every for the now day. And then giving the, every now and then giving the hint of, hmm, I think I'm going to buy this, and then not actually buying it. When you bid Melwin farewell for the morning, and you're heading back up the road. I forgot I actually put road names on here. Mm -hmm. I'm a good DM. Back up Winster Road here. Uh two moss caps that you don't recognize step up and they don't restrain you they don't clap you in irons or anything but they walk towards you with purpose and they bid you good morning good morning gentlemen one of them nods back towards the lighthouse and asks if you just came from that shop and florian turns and looks at the shop and goes yes i did they ask if you would be so kind as to submit to a brief inspection. Oh, but of course, gentlemen. Oh, what is this in regards to? And one of them explains, answers your question, while the other one pulls a small blank coin out of his bag. And he just kind of holds it out in front of you and he flips it back and forth a few times. The other one explains that they've heard reports of illicit magical items being sold from that lighthouse and the proprietor does not have a license to do that within the city uh would i have heard about this being from the signers guild or is this the first i like i've heard of this you're a wizard right 
Yeah. Do you know Detect Magic? I do. Have you ever cast Detect Magic in his shop? Yeah, probably at and some point. What's your passive insight? Passive insight is uh, 12. Okay. You've noticed magical items in the shop before, but you've never mm. personally purchased one. Okay. Uh, about this time, uh, the man flicking the coin back and forth, he puts it back in his pocket. He asks you just a couple of brief questions about the magic items you are carrying. Probably just your spell focus, I imagine. Yeah, my cane focus, which mm. is a very short scepter. And they quickly ask to see your magician's credentials. And Florian gives them? Okay. I, I don't know what the credentials in this case would be, just like papers. You'd have a badge from the Signer's Guild. This oh, okay. would actually yeah. be a cloth patch that you could be expected to sew onto an item of clothing. And then you could actually do work as a signer. You could okay. essentially do the job that the guy following the grocer around was doing. Gotcha. And they're very cordial, and all of this is in order, and they thank you for your time. Uh, can I have your names? And they give you the, their <laughs> names. Uh, okay. They're not men that you recognize in the neighborhood, and they're not names that you recognize either. Okay. Uh, is this uh, is this your new patrol? Usually I'm familiar with the moss caps that are patrol this district, and I can't believe I've come across you guys before. You gentlemen before. And they give you their assurances that they know the neighborhood well enough. I see. Very well, then. Uh, if there's no other problems, then Florian's going to head back to the barge. Okay. <laughs> and is everybody returning to the barge after their morning errands are done? Yeah. yeah. Like, Gus might have, like, walked around looking for Alexander when he couldn't, like, didn't have anything else to do for the rest of the morning, but past that, yeah. Uh, we had given your receptionist a name. I don't remember what it is. Kevin's the intern, right? Kevin's yes. the yeah. intern. Kevin is the intern. Uh, no came up with it. Oh, I, I don't remember my own name. It was, it was like Lois Vesterhoff, but not. So I have a, just a bunch of generic notes from the campaign, some of which were, I wrote down during the last campaign. And this line just makes me laugh every time I read it. I have no idea what this is in reference to or why I wrote it. But it said, it says, regarding wishes, McDole equals gullible little shit. <laughs> So that checks out. I don't know why I wrote that. Which McDowell though? This is I don't know. <laughs> two of them. <laughs> How could you? How did we ever let happen? <laughs> <laughs> so Lois, her name, not it's Linda. She's in human resources. So Linda is. Uh, Humanoid resource. A half orc wearing a dainty polka dot sundress. And you and all just... thought you were creating Janine from the Ghostbusters, but who I'm actually giving you is Judy from Dr. McNinja. <laughs> as That's your receptionist. Bad. And she grunts at you a good morning as you walk in. She's a lady of few words. Hey, Kevin, the uh, rest of the groceries are out in the. Right on the edge of the ladder when you bring those in. Kevin is nowhere in evidence. Kevin? He has run off for the morning to do whatever he does and has not returned just yet. Well, I guess it was the right call not asking him to come with me. No, Gus will go. He'll stop you and say, I'll go get him. Thanks. And this is a plank, not a ladder. Oh, okay. Well, you have to have a ladder going up to the... I, I, I was going to put a ladder on your actual sign, just a ladder and an arrow pointing down. Oh, the ladder up, up, up there. Yeah, no. I thought he meant, like, this was a ladder. Ah. Well, that's a gangplank. Clearly. Yeah. Anyway. 